Welcome back to TNJ Construction family. Hey, before doing a construction project in Liberia, you need to know the exchange rate of Liberian dollar to the US dollar because it's going to affect your budget and your transaction as you go into doing your construction project. There it is. I'll keep updating you guys on the rate at time get closer and closer towards the end of the year and beginning of next year, but the rate is very important. Hey family, welcome back. This episode or this video is going to be very important for those that are thinking about beginning or building a home or business center in Liberia. There are some steps and processes you need to be aware of. And this is the same process we follow when you come to us to do your construction project. So a lot of people call me. What's the step like? How does thing work out? And stuff like that. So I just wanted to summarize all of this into one video. And at the same time, give you up-to-date prices on materials. And as a bonus, I'm going to be also leaving you with a tip on how to build your fence cheaply. That's another way you can build your fence cheaply, you know, at least. 40% of the cost of the fence is going to be down and you can still have a solid fence as well, especially for those that have like bigger land area and stuff like that, but they want to fence it. And at the same time, they don't want to break the bank. You definitely want to watch this video. I'll be leaving that tip towards the end of this video. All right. If this is your first time here, we'd like to welcome you. This is TNG Construction. We are the bridge between you and your construction project in Liberia. So if you're looking at doing a construction project in Liberia, TNJ Construction is the company to go with. We design, we build, everything is going to be transparent with us, and we get a job done. Plain and simple. All right? Hey, if you haven't subscribed and you are here, we are almost hitting the 1,000 subscriber mark. Join us. Let's hit that number. And get it done okay this video is very important so definitely you want to stick around and watch it all through i'm going to be giving you the steps the process the prices of materials and tip on how to build a solid fence at 40 percent less of the cost so pretty much you'll be building a fence at 60 percent value all right all right guys let's dive into the video Step one. So first of all, if you're going to build a house, first of all, you need a plan, right? So we start with the plan. If you come to us and you want for us to do a construction project for you, we ask to see if you have a blueprint. If you don't have one, then we can help you design one, you know, and give you a good deal on the price for the, um, the blueprint. And the next step would be visiting your land. To go and see the actual physical you know features on the land and also measure the length and weight of your land because most often from our experience what people have on their d on their paperwork for their land is not the actual measurements on the ground of how the cornerstone are placed so we we like to go and see those things and then we can kind of update you with things and it also help us with a design process to know the type of foundation that's gonna go in to doing your house or your project. And then the next thing that also give you a, a segue into the preliminary of your project. So all of our projects start with preliminary and the preliminary has to do with checking your land to see if the land is clearing. Two, us. Do you have a warehouse on the land? Three, is there water available on the land or do we have to dig a well? Do we have to build a warehouse? All that stuff fall within preliminary. And then once we have all of that, we have to what? Set up the motor bowl, set up the profiling, you know, for your proposed project. And then we can go into that. Now, let me give you the price, the general price that that might cost. So it can range from $300 to 
to $2,500, depending to see if you're landing clearing, if you have to build a warehouse there, and then, you know, set up, you know, set up the motor bowl, the profiling, wood pegs, the line, and all that stuff. And the equipment that you are going to be responsible for. So the wheelbarrow and shovel is a customer that is responsible for that. We provide the rest of the other tools, the digger, all of our other tools we come with it. But the wheelbarrow and shovel is going to be the customer responsibility. So all of that expense fall within the preliminary. And how much is a wheelbarrow? You can get a good solid wheelbarrow for like 55 bucks, you know, and then you we do the extra welding to it, you know, just to solidify things. And then there you go. You have a solid wheelbarrow. And then we can use that for some time because the wheelbarrow in Liberia they are not too strong, so it breaks easily. So we like to reinforce them before using them. So all of that fall within the preliminary. Preliminary, again, if I go over it, site visitation, blueprint, um, building a warehouse, digging a well, you know, buying water container like drums and stuff like that that we're going to need, especially for the foundation level, it's going to be a lot of water usage. So we have to have all of those on site. And another thing the customer is going to be responsible for is security for the warehouse. Okay. Our guys are usually, you know, encourage the guys to sleep on site during the weekdays. So that's going to help with security for you. You don't have to pay for that, but on the weekends, for the guys has to go home to their families. You, if you can't find one, we can find one for you, but then you will pay the cost. It's very reasonable, so shouldn't be anything that will scare you. But again, that responsibility for on the customer. Now, purchasing of your materials. We don't like to purchase materials. We have our own procurement service that do all of our material purchases, but we don't like to purchase materials for the customer. So if you have somebody on the ground, that can work along with us to get the materials to us, we welcome that. If you don't have anybody you can trust and you want to go through our procurement service, you're going to come with a little fee. But, you know, just because putting all the report together, you know, and stuff like that. And one of the main reasons, which is a turn off for us to buy people materials, is they are always skeptical, you know, of us trying to cheat them or anything like that. So, we just want you to pay us for the workmanship, supply us with your materials, and then we get your job done. That's all we want. Plain and simple. All right? So all of that for you will be in preliminary, and preliminary goes from anything from around $300 to $2,500 based on what you have going on on your land. Now, the bigger your land, obviously, the more expensive it's going to be, especially if you I've been clear it and you have to clear the entire land. So that's another thing too. All right. Now we're going to go into step two. Okay, guys. Step two. Let's look at some actual prices on materials. You know, most of the materials we use in Liberia, especially for building, is cement blocks. Some people call it country blocks. But it's a cement block, so and it have sizes. So we got it eight inches, which is usually recommended for a foundation. And we got a six inch, and then we have the four inches. So let's look at the prices on those. So the eight inch blocks, you know, the market price right now is one dollar twenty five cents for one eight inch block. In Liberia, everybody has their prices, but on average, that's what you're going to pay. We sell our eight inch block for $1.15. And we just do that to encourage our customers to get the blocks from us. But then you get the blocks and you also pay for transportation. So that is that. The six inch block in Liberia, some area you'll find it for uh, 90 Liberian dollars. Currently, right now, with the rate kind of with the Labrin currency depreciating against the US dollar. So, you know, prices is not going to be stable. But again, with the ratio 
and the quality of black we are putting out, we sell out 80 cents. In Liberia, you might find it, you know, generally, you might find it around maybe 65 cents, 60 cents, the durability of those blocks. I cannot guarantee them. That's why we only use to buy our block for our customer from a reputable block manufacturing company because if the block have too much sand in it, it also affects the quality of your of the of the of the structure we are building. So we always use to buy our blocks from Greystone, you know, John Davis and those people until we started making our own blocks. So for our blocks, most of our customer we have worked with so far almost Let's say 90% I purchased the blocks from us because the one that warranty she in case anything go wrong, they know who they can go to for the blocks. So they are purchased the blocks from us. But yeah, our six inch block is 80 cents. But then if you are buying anything over 3,000, uh, 3,000 blocks or more, definitely which you're going to need, you know, we can help you with a discount price. So. We can kind of work things out that way too. And then the four inch black, we sell it at 60 cents. You know, I think you can find it in Liberia for like 45 cents or so. You don't usually find it a lot on the market, but it's there. You know, some places you'll find it for like 50 cents or so. We see our aging. Some places you'll find it for like 60 cents, like the reputable black company. You'll find it there. So, well, we our blocks, not to blow our own home. We are using two different type of scent, and then we are following the proper ratio in making those blocks. So we guarantee the blocks we are putting out. All right, so that's on the blocks. Now let's talk about another material you're gonna need. The steel, you're gonna you have different sizes of steel we're gonna need for the project. We got the what? The 14 millimeter steel, the 12 millimeter steel. So the 14 millimeter steel is going to be around what seventeen dollars for one, and it's thirty-three. Let's say thirty-two feet long. Thirty-two feet long, seventeen dollars a piece. The 12 millimeter steel is thirteen dollars and fifty cents for one. You know the same length. The 10 millimeter steel is around. Eight dollars and seventy-five cents. The eight millimeter steel is going to be six dollars, and then we'll have the quarter rock that is around two dollars. And then the tie wire that we we'll use for all of our for tying everything together and stuff like that, it's only ten dollars a row. So that is that on the steel. So based on whatsoever amount of steel you have in your estimate, you know, you're just going to multiply it by the dollars amount. All right, let's go to the wood, you know, for framing, form work, and stuff like that. So the Wawa bowl, about 12 feet long, you're getting it for $6 a bowl. Six dollars. Some places you'll find it for like five dollars and fifty cents, something like that. You know, depending on the quantity you are buying and who you're dealing with, and the woods too, they have different grade. So if you go to buy them and you don't know the right type to pay, they might sell you the one that is bad, you know, for cheap, and you think you're getting a good deal, and then it end up being a bad deal. So be careful where you pay for out there. And stuff like that. But if you're going with TNJ construction, you know, and you're purchasing your materials, we can send uh, some of our guys along with whosoever doing your material purchase to guide them in the process to pick out the right material that we're going to need because it's definitely going to affect the quality of our work, you know. So that is that. So that's it for the wood. Let's go with the two by four. Two by four. You can find it for like four dollars, three fifty four dollars a piece. You know, sometimes it's four fifty four dollars fifty cents. You can find it for two by eight. 
you don't really find two by eight, so you have to buy the or uh, two by twelve and rip it to get that two by eight piece. So definitely, the guys will charge you maybe around maybe fifty cents or seventy five cents to rip the wood, and then you can find this. You get the size specific size you need in there, but that that will have to do with the builder, you know, for builder specific need or what he needed for and stuff like that. So again. We can help with our process if we have one doing your project. Now let's talk about the two by two. The two by two wood, you can find it maybe what, like three dollars fifty cents, sometimes two dollars fifty cents. Again, the Liberia, you know, the prices. Everybody has their prices, so you know, all of your estimate you want to do at least plus 10, 20 percent. Plus or minus, it can go both ways, you know. So, yeah, you should just have that in mind. So, if you got an estimate for maybe twenty dollars, maybe you want to just just run it up to twenty five dollars or twenty six dollars, just to be you know on the safe side and stuff on the prices of those. And then, what else do I have on the list that we have to nails? So the nails will buy the whole cartoon of the nails for twenty dollars. So that's another thing. But then when you're buying the individual packs, sometimes you pay seventy-five cents, one dollar, something like that, fifty cents, depending on the size and the type of nail. They got a wire nail and they have the steel nail. So the price that I bought, we usually just buy the whole box. The whole cartoon, which is twenty dollars for the cartoon, so that's that for the nails. And to do an entire foundation, you probably might need maybe, depending on the size of your project, maybe three cartoons, or sometimes two cartoons. So that's another thing there for you to know. These are all unit prices I'm giving you, but your overall material estimate, you will see the quantity that will be required for whatsoever project you got going on and then another thing we use in our foundation is a damp proof plastic that will cover the foundation with before we cast that's a twenty dollars for a roll for that one so that's another thing you get to so sometimes you probably depend on the size of your house or your or your property you're probably going to need two or three because it's spread out pretty big so that is that now let's talk about sand. Sand on average, a full truck load, which is going to be six blades. A blade of sand, first of all, let's start with the blade. A blade of sand is $25. So six blades will fit in, fit in the bigger truck size trucks. And then you pay $140, sometimes $150 for transportation, depending on where you're getting the same from. Now the same tool, you have to know the type of sand you, you're getting for your project. Because the rough sand is going to be the one that is recommended. But sometimes if you just tell the people that you want sand, they can bring you smooth sand and stuff like that. And then you can have problem with it later. So you want the rough sand for your foundation. And you show that that rough sand is coming from the river area, in the carway area, and stuff like that. Now, somebody will ask, do you recommend the seeds, the beach sand for my project. Yeah, you can use the beach sand, but then you have to keep the sand maybe throughout the rainy season so the salt can be removed from within the sand before you use it. If you don't do that, eventually you'll run into maintenance issue later on down the road. So we usually get our sand from the riverside, the river sand, and the rough sand specifically for all of our construction projects. Now, the smooth sand, you can only get the smooth sand when you're doing finishing work, plastering, you know, and stuff like that. Then you definitely want to use the smooth sand. So that is that. Sand on average, $280 to $300 for a full truck load of sand. So to do a foundation, probably going to need two low of those, which is going to be around $600 or 560 for the two truck low, and then we'll move into the coast aggregate, 
which is the racks. Racks, $90 a blade. Some area you find a, a smaller blade size. You, you probably, some guys will be saying it's $75 or $80 or $85. So if you, you're buying the racks, you, you definitely want to make sure you know, you're getting the, the real, the, the good size blade. And six of those fit in the truck too as well. So you can buy less, you don't have to buy six, but it's going to be at least anything from 75 to $90 a blade for the racks. So, but you should have, we should have go with a giant size blade. So we always pay the $90 for the blade. And you can see it when the truck comes, the rack is going to be heaping over. That's how you know you're getting the right, you know, racks for your box. So. And then transportation, again, for the racks, goes around, <clears throat> transportation would be around $150, you know. It, 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 transportation can be negotiable. You can talk to whosoever delivering your racks and see where you can find, but usually around $150. So just budget for that, all right? Now, what size of racks do I use for my foundation, you know? For flow casting, that's another thing. You know, you have to find out. You have to have the information. On if you are you yourself are supervising your project, or if you're going with TNG construction, definitely will instruct the driver on the size of racks we need for the project. All right. Now that goes to cement. Two type of cement. We have for the two point five grade. We have the 32.5 grid, and they have different companies that are selling the same thing, but it's generally the same type. You got Cemento selling the same thing, you have the Futa, you know, having the same thing. So usually the 42.5 grid is $8.50, you know. We're buying more, you can kind of negotiate for $8.40, depends. We're buying from the factory direct, Buying huge quantity, you might even get a further discount. But again, it's where warehousing comes into play and all of that stuff. Now, the 32.5 grade is $8. Sometimes you get it for $7.90 for one bag of cement. So definitely, those are the prices that are on the market right now. Now, one of the things that can affect your expense ratio would be the transportation, depending on the location of your project. Do we have roads going to your project? But I will talk about more of those when we, when we get to contingency. So, so that is that so far. Am I missing anything here? Okay, plumbing parts for doing your foundation or the project, the plumbing part, the rough plumbing you know parts so on average you can spend anything around 150 to 250 dollars on the plumbing parts and then you also have to pay you know the plumber for doing that work and stuff like that but if you went with tnj construction we can include all of that into our negotiation so doing the rough plumbing the rough electrical Another thing is going to be the, the rough electrical, getting all the electrical parts, conduits and stuff like that, that will go into you know, doing your work while we are building the house. So by the time we are done with everything, all the things are set in place. So on average, electrical parts in something around 200 to 300, based on the size of your land, the plumbing, can even you can even get plumbing parts for around seventy five dollars based on the size of your project. So that is that. So but so if you're doing your estimate on how much things gonna cost, at least those are the things that you should be aware of. So that's the prices for things currently on the ground. But it depends on the size of your project and stuff like that. Am I missing anything uh, that I didn't touch on? I think in general, those will be 
the material prices that you will be spending, the material prices you should be aware of, if you will, when doing your project. So I think they will be the one. When we get to roofing and interior finishing and stuff like that, which I'll be making another video on paint, you know, prices of things, ceiling, you know, I'll bring you the prices too as well. All right? So this is why you should subscribe. This is why you should share these videos. Share with all your family and friends that are thinking about doing construction projects in Liberia that are already doing construction projects in Liberia that are not there so they can be aware of the prices so they can know if they're getting a fair shake or not. All right? All right. Next step will be contingency. So let's dive into contingency. Okay, family, let's look at contingency. Contingency. So contingency is what happened when you don't, that you didn't expect to happen. So you're building your house, you have your budget, but then in the process of building a house or doing the project, you run into the unexpected. So that's what the contingency is. And in Liberia, why I like to throw contingency in there is because a, the transportation, the roads, transportation and road mainly affect your contingency. So, like some of the rural area, you know, the country is doing the best, you know, by building some roads and stuff like that. But for the areas, the new land we are buying. In the different places, the places are in a remote part of town, and there's no road network reaching there. So, bringing in materials to those places can be a hassle. The truck will come, but because of the road condition, it will stop halfway and will have to pull the materials down. You have to pay people manually to haul the materials to the site. And in doing that, especially for things like rocks and sand, some will remain on the ground as far as 25% get left up on the ground. You know, if you worse, worst case scenario, you leave it there, you don't have, you can't find people, so people come and take it. So that was stuff that you, you, you calculated for. But now, it's, it's not being used on your project. So you have to find that money again to be able to get it. So those are the issues we have been running into. And sometimes when we try to tell some of our customers, they don't understand. That's why we say we want you to buy your own materials so you can see for yourself. So, but again, those are things that happen. So, but what would like to go see your land, and then we're gonna want to advise you in advance, warn you in advance of what is to come and stuff. So you don't be surprised. And if you are not there and you're doing the project in Liberia, maybe when they tell you about some of these things, so you don't think that they are trying to rip you off or stealing from you or something like that. Those are things that are actually happening. Contingency. Another thing, weather, you know, Liberia, sometimes people say, oh, I'm going in November, you know, it will be dry season. I don't get a grind, it's still pretty wet. Anyway, so it's still raining in December. So you can be moving materials, the men can be in the middle of work, heavy rain can come, damage your material. A cement work can make cement keep it all day. The actual town of cement is supposed to stay on the ground. It's supposed to be after it has been pulled out of the bag, max, 45 minutes to one hour, should be used up. If it's not used up, the power in that cement start to dissipate, start to go away, and are weakening the structure you are building. So 
We are working with cement. When you pour it out of the bag, you need to use it up right away. Because once it's mixed with water, it's almost like a ticking, ticking clock. Everything starts to wind down. It got to be used. It got to be used up. So in the middle of your work, heavy rain pour, you lose your materials for another contingency. Transportation. You don't have a warehouse. You're afraid for people to now. Or uh, the warehouse, you don't want to park a lot of material there before people you got doing the project start stealing your materials and stuff like that. So you want to bring it in so they can use it as they need it. Then you're going to end up spending more on transportation. That's another thing. And transportation again goes on the location of your land. And is there any good road that going there? Because sometimes even you can find the driver, they will not want to come there because of the roads that lead to your project site. So those are things that fall on our contingency. Again, TEF, just plain old TEF. Put material somewhere, boom, disappear. You got to buy the materials. You're already in the middle of the project. What are you going to do? Stop, quit. The construction project got to go on, right? So you got to be aware of some of those things. So those are things that happen. And maybe <clears throat> for some of you guys that are bidding, that are experiencing other things, you might be a different scenario that I didn't measure. <clears throat> that I didn't measure that might that you might want to maybe leave a comment in the comment section so other people can be able to read it and see it. You know, but these are things that are happening every day. You know, so construction project got your own headache, guys. It come with your own headache. Whether you're the one spending the money or the people that are actually doing the building of the work. So what we evolve say we can do, it's not an easy task. You know, it's not an easy task. We have to be able to deliver. Whether rain or shine, how many things we go through on the ground, physically doing your project, we can come to you and complain. We just go ahead and get a job done. Okay, guys. Until then, I don't know if I missed anything, but let's watch this video on the things that I was talking about so you can get some tip and idea. Now, if you come to TNJ Construction to build a fence for you like that, definitely we know we're going to give you something solid that's going to stand the test of time. All right? If you're doing it by yourself and stuff like that, it can still be done, but just make sure the guys are doing it for you know what they're doing. Till then, remember one love. I love you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If this is your first time here, like, share, and subscribe too as well. If you're a returning viewer, you haven't subscribed, please join the family. If you're a subscriber, I'm so grateful you subscribe to us. But please like and share the video too as well so your other friends and family can be able to get this good information. That are very, very crucial to everything Every one of us are trying to do in Liberia. Until then, one love. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Okay, family. This, this is the fence I'm talking about. You don't need a lot of steel. If we're going to use steel for this type of fence, it's pretty much going to be in the foundation 14. But all of the pillows are going to be blocks. We're going to interlock them. Make sure they're locked in. They'll be a solid foundation base. And pretty much you're just going to be needing sand and cement for the work. All the four corners, we can post, we're can we going to post steel in there to hook it up. But you can also interlock it to at the corners. And you should still be fine. As you can see, you can build a high fence with this. I mean, they are using the same things in Ghana, they are using them in Nigeria, and pretty much they are standing the test of time. So, if you want a fence done like this, obviously everything has a pros and cons. We can definitely help you with that, and most of the things you're going to need, your major material will be the sand and cement. You use crushed rock for the foundation 14, but then you have sand and cement the rest of the way.